In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and dearly beloved in Christ, our Father, Emmanuel, Awea, and our life share with you a touch of God's love. That's a short reflection and prayer on the old mass readings of uh, Saturday, 29 June 2024. Solemnity of Saints Peter and Paul. The readings are taken from Acts 12, 12 to 11. Psalm 33, 2 to 9, 2 Timothy 4, 6 to 8, 17 to 18, and Matthew 16, 13 to 19. The theme of the reflection is how to use your charisms. How to use your charisms. The first reading says King Herod started persecuting certain members of the church. He beheaded James, the brother of John. And when he saw that this pleased the Jews, he decided to arrest Peter as well. This was during the days of unleavened bread, and he put Peter in prison, assigning four scars of four soldiers each to guard him in turns. Herod meant to try Peter in public after the end of Passover week. All the time Peter was under guard, the church prayed to God for him unremittingly. On the night before Herod was to try him, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, fastened with double chains, while guards kept watch at the main entrance to the prison. Then suddenly the angel of the Lord stood there. And the cell, the cell was filled with light. He tapped Peter on the side and woke him. Get up, he said, hurry. And the chains fell from his hands. The angel said, then said, put on your belts and sandals. After he had done this, the angel next said, wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Peter followed him, but has no idea that what the angel did was all happening in reality. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed through two guards' posts, one after the other, and reached the iron gate leading to the city. This opened of its own accord. They went through it and had to walk the whole length of one street when suddenly the angel left him. It was only then that Peter came to himself. Now I know it is all true, he said. The Lord really did send his angel and has saved me from Herod and from all that the Jewish people were so certain what happened to me. And the second reading says, My life is already being poured away as a libation. The time has come for me to be gone. I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All that is to come now is the crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all <clears throat> who have longed for his appearing. The Lord stood by me and gave me power, so that through me the whole message might be proclaimed for all the pagans to hear. And so I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from all the evil attempts on me and bring me safely to his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> and the Gospel says, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he put this question to his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say he is John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he said, Who do you say I am? Then Simon Peter spoke up, You are the Christ, he said, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Simon, son of Jonah, 
you are a happy man because it was not flesh and blood that revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. So I say, I now say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the underworld can never hold out against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be considered bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be considered loosed in heaven. Beloved, the solemnity of St. Peter and Paul teach, teaches us how to use our charisms to promote unity. The Gospel shows that St. Peter was given the charism of being the earthly leader or governor of the church. The earthly leader or governor of the church. That was his charism. That was his role. And if he executed his leadership role well, the church would never be destroyed. The first reading is a fulfillment of this prophecy in the Gospel. It's a fulfillment of this prophecy. First reading is a fulfillment of this prophecy. After the resurrection of Jesus, Peter assumed a leadership role in the church. And the devil, through Herod, tried to destroy Peter. But an angel came and freed Peter to continue exercising his charism. He did this until he was martyred after he accomplished his mission on earth. So he could not be martyred until he accomplished his mission, until he used his charism to the full. This implies that when we use our charisms according to God's will, the devil cannot destroy us until the Lord allows it. This is confirmed by the second reading. In this time, Paul was given the charism to take the gospel to non-believers, to non-Jews, or to preach it to the whole world. The reading shows that he used this charism according to God's will, and though his life was threatened many times, nothing could destroy him until his mission was accomplished. For he says, I have fought the good fight to the end. I have run the race to the finish. I have kept the faith. All that is to come now is a crown of righteousness reserved for me, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not only to me, but to all those who have longed for his appearing. This means to use our charisms well is to use them as the Lord inspires and not to use them for selfish gains. The church has instituted this feast, this solemnity, for both Peter and Paul on the same day to show that if we use our charisms according to God's will, it will bring unity and progress to the church, just as Peter and Paul used their charisms, different charisms of different people, but it brought about unity and progress in the church. But if we use our charisms according to our own will, it will bring this unity, conflict, and retrogress to the church and to us, not only to the church, but also to us. For instance, we cannot become saints like St. Peter and Paul. 
Dearly beloved, in the name of Jesus, receive the grace to use your charisms according to God's will. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will rescue you from all evil attempts on your life and bring you safely to his heavenly kingdom. Amen. Can I share God's love by sharing this message with others and subscribing to this YouTube channel to enable us to know the subscription is free. The icon for subscription is at the bottom corner of the right side of the video. And may Almighty God bless and protect you always, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.